Today we're going to be doing some work on the south bend. I'm going to be replacing the cross slide nut and doing a full rebuild on all the seals. The bottom, the reservoir is leaking, so I want to fix that. Um, I use this lathe for some fairly precise stuff, and having a lot of slop in the cross slide, it's, it, you're going to have slop, and you can work around that, but for this particular application, this is just a little bit too much because I have to back off 200 thousandths before I take an actual cut. So when I open this up, and when you open it up too, it's going to look like there's a lot going on in here, and you might get a little bit confused or freak out. It's okay. It's quite a simple thing. And since this is a Model A, we got longitudinal feed and cross feed, which is really nice in a small machine like this, and I use it a lot. So this will be fun. Um, I'll, I'll show you what's in the box and then we'll get started. Alright, so off of eBay, this is what you get. This is costing about 80 bucks, which is pretty good. Um, looking at this cross slide nut, it's actually better than the one that's on there. It's a lot more beefy. I think it's a little longer. It's actually all machined. That one's cast. So I think this is going to be good. That's just brass. That's what we got here. So this is the apron seal, it's the main um, reservoir journal seal on the bottom. This is a very useful thing. I've made these before, they're not that hard. But if this is the only thing you need to replace, then you can just make it. Just a cardboard gasket. The reversing gear headstock, lead screw, model B, um, apron, C. So it's basically got all everything you need to know about where goes what goes where and you know, all, all that stuff. So this is this is a good thing to have. We'll go back over to the lathe and remove the saddle and the tailstock, and then we'll bring back over to the bench and disassemble it. Off we go with the tailstock. So I regularly clean the ways. Every time I do a project, I strip this off and clean it and reapply whey oil, and that is the most important thing you can do to keep your bed looking good. Alright, next we're going to take the lead screw end bushing off. So it's impo important before you take the end bushing out, they support the lead screw. So I'm just using some scrap aluminum. So the next thing you have to do is disengage the threading dial. Um, there's a little Allen head set screw that you just loosen and it comes off. Some don't actually have a threading dial, that was an aftermarket thing. Reel it over as far as you can. Make sure everything's in neutral. And then we can just move this over to the other side. So once we get to the end like this, it's pretty easy. That we're not we're off the rack now. I'll just grab it, support it. And that's it. So, so now we got that piece of aluminum nicely supporting the lead screw. Alright folks, and this is where the fun begins. So first we're gonna start by taking the actual carriage off which is the top section here. That just comes out with these two flat head screws. We'll pop that off. Um, we'll disassemble these uh, little wipers here on all the sides and then strip and clean that. And then we'll get into the apron. Not too bad. Usually a lot of chips will build up in here under the rack and all, especially in here, this is a very common, when I first cleaned this playing up, this is packed. This is the longitudinal lock.
Now you could try to make these felt seals, but they're die cut and they're very precise. So I'd just recommend picking them up. It's only about 20 bucks. Now, here's where the fun part begins. So this is the oil reservoir. Um, this is the engage, this is the threading engagement here. We got the clutch back in here, back under there. This is the main gear that goes on the rack. Um, right here, this cylinder has a key and that this key engages with the key on the lead screw, which drives the power feed for the longitudinal and cross slide. And the nice thing about doing this is if you take pictures or video of the whole process, then you know how to put it back together. Just pop out like that. Then you got the half nuts. So then we got this little pin right here. So that pin also holds the key, which engages in to the lead screw. Basically, this, this little nut is threaded on there, so I have to get that off. So this is one of the wicks. It's pretty built up with chips and gunk. This is the bushing that rides on that. This, to take the power feed lever off, there's a little tapered pin down in there. You tap it out. There it is. It's also got a little piece of wick. So keep in mind when you take this screw out, remember it's a, a left a left thread, so if you get surprised why it's not coming out, that's why. So then it should just slide out like that. To disassemble the worm cr clutch assembly, you just push on the shaft in the front. And it all should just drop out like that. All right, we now almost have it all the way disassembled, but we're not quite there. It's lapsed. All right, folks, now we're down to the main casting. So here we are. We got all the apron parts. I still need to take the cross slide apart. Um, this is the nut. That's the part we're going to be replacing with this one. Very happy with this. So it might be a little bit overwhelming when you get this thing apart, but it's really not that hard. It'll tell you how it goes back together. Um, it, I highly recommend you take video footage of yourself doing it and then along with this video you'll be able to There's a wick in a slot right here. 
can pull the whole thing out like just like that. I'm gonna use mineral spirits to break break the oil. Holy smokes, that was a lot of parts. Okay, so these are the parts that I got clean enough with the wire wheel. These are the parts that I'm gonna have to hand do with the toothbrush. All right, now that we have all those the parts cleaned up for this guy, we're now going to work on the apron. So I'm just using simple angle grinder with a wire wheel on it. And I'm just going to start going around in here. I'm going to get as much as I can with this. Obviously, I'm not going to get down in there. And then I'll scrub the rest of it out with uh, mineral spirits. Using a bottle brush to get in these holes is a very good idea. And it's helped me out a lot. Okay, we got those. There's a hole down in there. Right there. That hole goes down into the reservoir. Put it on the end. Just shove it down in there. It's pretty easy. And lay it flat down in to the keyway. And that's it for wicking. So this is the first part. This is the cam that goes down in there. Just put a little bit of type C, a little bit on it. Engage it with the hole and let it drop in. We then take the second gear, which this is the change gear which goes up to the power cross slide, and drop that in there like that. So this is has index motion which can go back and forth and it indexes on these pinholes with the arm. Okay, so the next step is doing the clutch. So the first part we're gonna drop in is this shaft. It'll go in there and it'll mesh gears with this wheel. Like, like that, oops, yep, push it up. Let the gear fall onto the little ledge of the cam, like that. Then, this housing goes on here like this. So it should be flush with the surface, like that. Then, drop this, this little spring in, like that. Then take the two bell, kind of like pads, but sort of steel. Now that we have the bells in, We'll take this shaft and drop it down like that, threads down, and make sure it, the locking detent locks in like that. Then, this is the hardest and most tricky part. Just drop these in here like this, maintaining parallelism. Just from doing this in the past, this, this, is, uh, this is the hardest part, in my opinion getting these little suckers in here. Okay, then you just push. And then just push like that. See, it locked in like that. Come around to the front and quickly screw the knob on. Okay, now that we have the knob screwed on, turn it back around. 
everything's lining up. Tis indeed. Now we're going to put the, the indexing arm on. So find the large side of the hole. Make sure the hole lines, lines up like that. Take your pin and slide it in. Take a little brass mallet or something, give it a few taps. It should go in real nice. And go until you feel that it's flush on the front surface. Type C on there. Now, this next step is highly important that you don't forget one major detail. The gear must go on first before you put the shaft in. So this is a very this is a tricky part. We have to start on this the very start of this thread in order to go onto the worm gear. But we also must hold our little piece of felt so that it doesn't slip with the shaft. So what we're gonna do is we'll take our pick, hold it back like that, take the shaft, go to the start of the thread as far as you can, and then just push it in. So you remember how I said that thing about a machine will always tell you how it goes back together? Well, this is very a very good time to show you why. So the point of this is, is we have a hole here. We also have a hole here. And we have a key that goes in this hole like that and engages on this nut on the outside like that. So if we were to put this thing on randomly, we could put it on the wrong way. Notice how this hole is not centered with the part. Thus, if we put it on the wrong way, all these holes wouldn't line up. So we got to know what, which side, this side, or this side, to put this on. Now we look at this surface. It's pretty smooth, and I don't see any circular marring. On a machine tool like this use, you're going to get it. But notice this side. There's a difference here. This has a lot of circular patterns. Not only that, but if you look on this side, it has a very big chamfer. On a bearing surface, you usually don't put a chamfer on it because you want to have as much sur wear surface as possible with this piece of cast iron. I can confidently say that this is the bearing surface that goes up with this. Backwards thread it and then forwards thread it so it engages properly. Goes on real smooth till about there. Now we'll take a long punch like this. I don't have like a little set wrench like that. But we'll slide it in there. It's a nice tight fit, so we won't beat that up too much. And then it's just as simple as this. Now we just gotta find that hole. Notice how that slipped in nice? So definitely on the right side. So I'm just gonna work it around just very lightly. I'm hardly using any weight. Just about the weight of the punch. Get any burrs off. Let's just mash them over so that this guy can go in easy. Slide it down the keyway until it reaches the end. How they machine this is amazing. They were very accurate about it. So slide the pin down in there like that. Then we take our engagement lever. So we'll first, we'll start by applying a little type C. So Notice this milled out, more like hacked out, but anyway, we're hack, milled out, <laughs> hacked, milled, milled out slot. This slot's got to go in that pin, and then it, the pin seats in this V groove. It won't engage, see this pin moves back and forth. So if, if this lever is in neutral, it allows this to spin. But when it's in any other position, Like that, it will not. Genius. Genius. So now we gotta install our half nuts. So this is the bearing surface. This does not need oil. Just this surface. 
Notice, notice how we have this little reservoir. Turns freely. Test all of our functions. Half nut works. Power cross feed. All right, the next step is, we have all these shafts in here and everything seems to be working good. However, we're not complete. The next things we need to do is put the screws in and set all the Allen screws. There we go. All right, now we gotta put the locking pin in. So it's just a little V pin. Slides up in there like that. Take the spring. We then take this large flat set screw. You only need to, you basically only need to engage the spring just so the hand lever doesn't fall out. So this gear simply slides in here like that. We take our little retaining clip and pop it on like that. While we're putting clips on, we might as well put this one on too. This is before snap rings were really a thing, so they just had these little little rings. They didn't have eyes yet. Back in the pre back in the prehistoric days before eyes were existed. We had to deal with this. Yes. Now that we have these clips on, we can put the carriage hand wheel on. Of course, you gotta put some oil in there. All right, now we can install the clutch cover. So we just take the cardboard gasket Okay, so the first thing we gotta do is take our nut and drop it. You know, it's nice and straight. Way oil. So basically, there's this little set screw and it goes down in there. Then there's another little piece of steel that goes through the bushing and into the set screw. When you tighten the set screw down, it creates force against that piece of steel, pushing it outwards against the wall and locking, thus locking the nut. Alright, these now are going to come together. We're now, we're now going to install the lock. Leave it very loose so it slides on onto the ways easy. Get any dust, chips. Then going to apply fresh coat of oil. We can then reinstall the rear end bushing. We can now install the weight clamp recommend putting a little oil on it, especially because that side's really hard to oil. Then tighten until you can feel just a little bit 